Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me for a tardy video response today. Uh, so I think I missed the deadline on this one. Uh, my apologies to Scott. Um, had an idea in mind that I wanted to get uh, to complete this video. It just didn't come together in time and work got a little crazy. And so I think I missed the deadline on this, but uh, nonetheless wanted to put together a video response for a channel that I really enjoy, Reindeer Studios. So I think everybody that's, you know, frequents this channel or is, is probably watching this is already aware of Scott and his awesome channel, Reindeer Studios, but in the event that you're not, please check the link below. You will not be disappointed. Not only does he have a great collection and is he a super supportive uh, and important member of the YouTube card community, uh, but he's also a tremendous artist and uh, Scott's channel is just a wealth of information about baseball and other things and just terrific uh, art. So highly recommend checking it out. Uh, I've really enjoyed a lot of his stuff and even gone all the way back into some of his older content because he, he's been at it a while and uh, I, can, I can tell you that it is absolutely worth it. I've never watched uh, a episode or a video over there that left me disappointed. So huge fan of Reindeer Studios and wanted to participate in his video response. So uh, basically Scott wants to see your best bargain cards. Um, and I think the, the terms of that are relatively loose. And I've enjoyed uh, watching a lot of the other responses on, on all of your channels and wanted to put one together to show my support of Reindeer Studios as well. So I have two cards to show that came to mind from the many that are in my collection. One's hockey, one's baseball. And we're going to start with the hockey one. So just a quick backstory on how I came about to uh, or came up uh, upon this card, I guess. This was the holiday season in 2015. It was actually Christmas Eve of 2015. I had to work a little bit. Uh, shoot into the office for a couple hours on Christmas Eve. And so on the way there, I stopped off at Target down the street from my house. Um, had to grab a couple last minute gifts. And then since I was in there, this was uh, back at a time where you could just walk into the card aisle, the trading card aisle, and there would actually be retail product available that you could pick from a selection of packs, blasters, and boxes. I, I know that sounds crazy here in 2021, but I assure you that was absolutely the case back in 2015 and because I had to shoot into work sort of as a reward for myself for spending some time there on the day before a holiday I picked up this retail tin of 2015-16 Upper Deck Series 1 Hockey. Um, these I think they still make these to this day but essentially they're a little more expensive than a blaster they're $29.99 as opposed to $19.99 for a retail blaster and you get a, a few more cards though so um, you get this nice metal tin, first of all, which I've held on to to this day. And then each one comes with an oversized box topper card. I got this Winter Classic Blackhawks card that I still have sitting in here because I don't know what else to do with it. And then below that, you would have two rows here of six packs each. So 12 total packs of Series 1 hockey from Upper Deck. Pretty good deal for uh, $30. I wish you could find this type of thing today, but you can't, as we all know. Um, but I, I picked that up for 30 bucks. So that, um, and, and I wish I had a creative story about, you know, how I walked up and picked the third one on the right because three is my lucky number or something like that. But uh, in reality, I was kind of rushing to get into work. I just grabbed the first one that was on the front of the shelf and went to the register without really thinking about it. So uh, that box sat in the car while I was at work, brought it home, uh, wrapped some gifts on Christmas Eve. And then as I was kind of winding down the evening, having a glass of eggnog, decided to crack into it and lo and behold, and uh, I'll put a link below to my blog article where I, uh, where I first opened this because otherwise, you know, just for credibility purposes, because this is actually gonna seem unbelievable, but I swear uh, it is the truth. Uh, and the very first pack on the left side, which was the first one I grabbed, ripped open and like three or four cards in, I found the card that everybody was chasing in the winter of 2015 the Connor McDavid Young Guns rookie card out of Series 1 Upper Deck. I was absolutely stunned. Um, you know, obviously, like, I had hoped to maybe pull a McDavid from that tin, and that was part of the allure in grabbing it. But honestly, I just wanted some cheap packs to rip over a holiday break and post to my blog and just kind of a way to keep myself immersed in the hobby with without spending a lot of money at 30 bucks. And uh, the odds are are not great to pull a McDavid out of there. I think you got maybe three Young Guns per tin and there's, you know, 50 players on the Young Guns checklist. So you have like, you know, one in 15, one in 16 
odds uh, as far as number of tins it would take to find a McDavid. So not impossible, but I certainly beat the odds. And to pull this out of the very first pack, uh, my jaw literally dropped. And uh, this thing went right on the scanning bed for a quick scan and then immediately into the one touch where it sits to this day. It's in pretty good shape. I'd like to get it graded at some point. Um, I, I don't hope to get a 10 or anything. I'd even be happy with a 9. Uh, but I just want to get it in a slab so it matches some of my other bigger uh, McDavid cards, but um, I've just kind of left it as is. Um, I like that it's the copy that I pulled from a pack, and it was just one of those um, jaw-dropping moments that you don't have all the time, and, and one of the rare cases where, you know, buying something at retail actually paid off and provided something of value. You know, I fully acknowledge as someone who enjoys ripping uh, wax and, and retail wax that nine times out of ten you come out of it with a fraction of what you put into it as far as the value of the cards, and that's fine because it's not what it's about, but um, I thought of this card for Scott's uh, video response just because it was one of those cases where it absolutely did uh, pay off to grab that retail tin, and even at the time that I pulled this back in 2015, this was a uh, hundred plus dollar card, which is kind of crazy for something that you could, you know, albeit a short print, something that you could pull out of a retail pack from, from Target, and you know, this was before McDavid had even made his mark. I think everybody knew he would be a big deal, but that's never a sure thing. And in the time since I pulled this, you know, he's won three scoring titles and two MVPs, and he is generally viewed as, you know, the next great one after Gretzky, Crosby, and Ovechkin. So as you can imagine, you know, between that and what's happened in the hobby the last couple of years, this is now a comma card or a four-figure card uh, to get this Young Guns rookie in good shape. Um, and that, that's really insane to think about from a, a card that was pulled out of a $29 retail tin of Upper Deck Hockey. So um, I didn't even open the other 11 packs that were in the tin for like months after that because I wasn't trying to build the set or anything. And I was just in such disbelief over the McDavid that I think I just kind of stopped there and wasn't until, you know, months later until I finally opened the rest of the tin. So... Uh, that's the hockey card, and uh, now I just want to touch on one baseball card quick before we wind this down. And, and the experience is actually kind of similar in some ways to the one we just talked about, but a little bit different as well. Um, so I got this one in a Fairfield repack that I got from Walgreens. And I don't know if everyone watching this or anyone watching this is familiar with what those are, but they were those you know cheap baseball card repacks that came in a brick in a cardboard box, hung on a peg at the pharmacy, and typically you would get, I think, 100 cards for $5. And you could see one card in the window on the front of the repack, and that was it. Um, so this is also uh, around the same time as McDavid, maybe 2015, 2016 time frame. Uh, there's a Walgreens down the street for me that I would go into monthly to get a prescription for me or my wife or pick up something we needed for the house. And they had some of those Fairfield repacks on hangers by the registers. And at the time, I, I was trying to be more efficient about using my hobby funds, and I, I resisted temptation as much as I wanted to rip one open, just because I knew that inside, it's, it's almost always junk. Uh, you get 100 cards that are a mix of 1990 Donruss, 1988 Tops, and while I love those sets, there's just not any value there, and I, I've already had many of those cards. Um, so I, I did a good job resisting it all summer. I must have stared at this same repack that had a Dustin Pedroia card, I think it was, on the front, if I recall. And I, I passed it up like four or five times. And I don't know what made me change my mind, but at one point, it was like a Friday evening. I stopped in there after work. I think I'd had a long work week, and that, that repack was just staring me in the face. And finally, just gave in a temptation, threw it in my in my uh, my cart. It was, I think, either $4.99 or $5.99 for 100 cards. So you're talking, you know, five or six cents a card. And a couple weeks later, or a few days later, I finally had time to rip it open and type up a blog post for, for the blog that I was writing at the time. And halfway through that stack of, you know, nickel cards, essentially, I found this. This is a Mookie Betts 2014 Tops update rookie card. And it's the short printed image variation of his update rookie. Of course, his, his uh, standard update rookie, which I, I didn't pull for this video, but should have. <laughs> Uh, just features him in sort of a classic, um, closely cropped batting pose. And this much rarer short print features Mookie in the dugout smiling for the camera. And these were really tough pulls. I don't know exactly what the insertion ratio was for these or 
you know, how tough this was to come by. But, you know, when you when you look for this card on eBay with all that's out there, um, you're lucky to see more than two or three copies of this available at any given time. And uh, they are well into the hundreds of dollars, uh, even, you know, in halfway decent shape at this point. And uh, Mookie seems to be a little bit down this year for, for collecting. For some reason, I, I can't figure out. I think he's actually having a sneaky good season when you look at his OPS and some other numbers. But um, even now, with a little bit of a decline in his popularity and card value, this is still a very expensive uh, multi-hundred dollar card that I got out of a $5 Fairfield repack at Walgreens. So um, I'll see if I can dig up the link to my blog article where I opened that repack and got this one as well. And I'll post that as long, along with the uh, McDavid article in case you want to check those out or do a little reading uh, from years past or, or kind of just validate my story that I've told here. But uh, that's, that's kind of a wrap. So those are the two cards that I thought of. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity for this VR, Scott, and to uh, kind of gave me the perfect chance to show off a couple of unique cards in my collection that I've been meeting to showcase. So uh, happy to support your awesome channel. Uh, keep doing the great thing that you do over there. And uh, again, if anyone watching this is not familiar, please go check out Reindeer Studios. You will not regret it. And uh, to everybody else, I will be back in the near future with some more sports card content. Take care.